Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Falcon Maintenance Track here in Salt Lake City. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm Leonardo, one of the Falco core maintainer. Joining me today are my fellow maintainers, Carlos, Jason, and Luca. Melissa should have also been here, but unfortunately, she couldn't join us today, so we are sending her a big hug. Today, we, are, we will talk about Falco ongoing development in the cloud native security. So, thank you for being here, and let's dive in. To begin, let's answer the question, what Falco is? Falco is a cloud-native tool for runtime security across host, containers, Kubernetes, and the cloud. It offers real-time threat detection by monitor kernel activity and the other data source, then delivering alerts when unexpected behavior detected. It's extensible and flexible. Falco supports plugins and custom rules that allow you to tailor it for your security needs. Think of Falco as a security camera for your cloud and infrastructure, offering real-time visibility and automatic det detection of security policy violations. As a CNCF graduated project, Falco is trusted and widely adopted, and an incredible community takes care of its development. We are always proud to remark that Falco is not just about technology, but is also about people. To honor this, we always remember the principles that have shaped the Falco project and that are also formalized into our governance. Our commitment to those values has always been the project powers and a call to everyone to join our journey. Now, let's look at how Falco works. Falco monitors kernel or cloud events through plugin, capturing the activity in your environment then reaches these events with contextual metadata, like container formation or um, Kubernetes metadata. Then it evaluates them against defined security rules to detect anomalies. If suspicious activity is detected, Falco generates real-time alerts notifying you immediately. Falco can also forward alerts to any service, or how we will see later, can even react automatically. This continuous process provides you deeper visibility and contributes to the security of your cloud application. I want to, to complete this overview by letting you explore the Falco journey from, from uh, its inception. Everything started in uh, 2016 when uh, SysDIC created Falco to address the need of, uh, for runtime security in cloud native environment. In uh, 2018, Falco became the first ever runtime security project accepted by the CNCF, and due to strong adoption and contribution, it advanced to the incubation level two years later. Finally, uh, by February 2024, Falco graduated from the CNCF, signaling its maturity and widespread adoption. By the way, I want to say thank you to our TOC sponsor, one is here, I, Emily, <laughs> for, this, for this milestone. Uh, since its inception, Falco has established itself as a must-have security tool uh, especially in the Kubernetes environment. Some other milestones that uh, worth mentioning include the introduction of Falco Sidekick that allow you to forward uh, the alerts to a lot of destinations. We have more than 70. The plugin system that extended the Falco domains uh, to potentially on any data source. The Falco Cattle, our, our ecosystem tool, uh, the Falco Cattle ability to subscribe to rules update and get them automatically updated into your Falco installation. And by the way, I'm very proud to report that uh, uh, every day more than one million of Falco installations subscribe to our public rule set that is in our GitHub, um, uh, it's under our GitHub organization. And finally, uh, the launch of Talon, that's uh, our new tool, it's uh, a powerful response engine for Falco. So, uh, you know how we got uh, here, let's see what's cooking. 
this is uh, an overview of what's happening in the Falco project right now, and also the, co the topics that we'll cover in this presentation. We are basically announcing how, we, um, how you can customize the rule set and the alerts. We are adding more um, expressive option for defining rules, and we are extending Falco capabilities with the new plugin and providing new, SDK, new SDKs for different programming language. Also, Falco now exports advanced metrics for both monitoring but also for alerting. And finally, as I said before, we will introduce Talon. Okay, it's time to hand it over to Luca, who will talk, who will talk about the latest updates. Thank you. Thank you, Leo, and thank you all, of course. Uh, so one question, of course, we want to answer here is what is new? So what are the new features that we have been working on in the last few months or so, since last time we spoke in Paris? So uh, the general theme and the idea that we had to build and develop these new features uh, was pretty much to, of course, uh, as usual, listening to our community and to our user needs. And uh, essentially, we want to cater to our uh, to the defenders, the one that use Falco to actually defend production systems and uh, find uh, and introduce new operators and make the language more expressive so that they can detect more things and they can detect what they care about. And uh, other improvements uh, were about mostly about the quality of life, the way we use Falco. We want to make Falco as easy to use as possible. We want to make its configuration as flexible as possible so that uh, you can actually uh, do and get the data that you want out of Falco. So uh, first of all, if you have been following Falco development uh, for a while, you will know that uh, we have introduced uh, something, uh, uh, new fields, uh, and uh, if you have lo ever looked uh, at uh, Falco bypass articles, uh, you will see that uh, bypassing rules with symlink uh, is possible. That's because we use uh, this field called uh, proc.name, which is uh, the Linux kernel concept of a process name, which uh, is not tied to the executable that launched it, but can be changed at runtime and has a specific semantics. So in order to uh, allow for uh, more robust detections, we introduced proc.exipath, which allows you to find the actual executable with symlink result uh, of the binary. The thing is, people tried to use it and said, uh, yeah, sure, I have, an, I have a path. Am I supposed to just, you know, add all possible paths where the find executable could be located in the system? Of course not. Uh, but there was a missing feature in Falco. And uh, in any programming language, you would use a, a base name operator to, uh, to say, hey, I just want any binary that has the last part that is find. And, we, uh, and in order to introduce that, we introduced a new set of capabilities into Falco, and we introduced the operators in, uh, in Falco. This typing, base name, proc exipath, you could, is something that you couldn't do before. So we have introduced uh, uh, some utility functions uh, that people have asked. So we've got uh, uppercase, lowercase, base64, base name uh, as, that I just described, and val. Val allows us to do another thing that people were asking for, but you couldn't do with Falco, which is uh, essentially saying, uh, writing a rule such as a process deleting its own executable, uh, which means that you have to match both on the right and left hand side of a condition in order to, in order to get the rule that you want. And so we introduced this. Also, it's not pictured in the slide, but we also added a, a regex operator, uh, which allows you to match via uh, a regex, of course, uh, but Please note that a uh, regex match uh, is a bit slower, as you know, than a regular match. So if you use it uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, starts with or with, uh, you're, you're doing bad. Don't, don't do it. Uh, I'm watching you. Anyways, uh, another thing that we were trying to, uh, we were trying to improve uh, is uh, actually how Falco operates at runtime and how you select your rules and you customize your output. So if you uh, are using Falco, you know that we have uh, several packages that you can download with rules. Uh, Falco comes with about 25 rules, and then you can download about 80 rules from our repositories. So, uh, but 
also, the Falcon Manual tells you that uh, you probably want a subset of them. So you want to select which one you want to use, which makes total sense. But when you go and take a look at how you actually do it, you will find that uh, uh, in, the rule, in the versions before the latest ones, you had three options that existed uh, since Falcon's inception, pretty much. Since the beginning, you had this uh, uh, dash T capital T lowercase and D, and if you stop reading that, uh, I, I did, I stopped reading all that, uh, you will find that they don't mix together and some only can only remove a tag and some add the tag and some can only remove some rules but only by substring. It kind of feels like being in an adventure game. You are trying to make a spell and the rules are very complicated and you, uh, you find out that you are unable to, uh, to, to do what you want. And if you recognize the game, I love you. Anyways, uh, so we wanted to we want to um, to do something that was easier to use for for uh, Falco. So we just added a new configuration option that uh, allows you to pretty much enter a series of commands to disable our rules, uh, to enable a subset of rules, to enable tags, uh, and so you can actually decide to maybe first disable everything, only enable a specific tag, and then uh, if you deploy with Kubernetes, for example, you can just uh, uh, you can simply. Uh, update your config map uh, and your Falco configuration will be updated uh, very quickly. So, another thing that we wanted to do is customizing the output that you can send to Falco, so that, that actually Falco produces. So, uh, you have uh, all the rules always have text output and we also have structured output. And people were trying to customize this in, a, in very flexible ways, which Falco didn't allow, especially for the structured output in the JSON object. We had one one specific contributor who actually tried to customize the JSON object. And on GitHub, we got an issue that started with a sentence just to give you an idea of the workarounds used at the moment with this. OK, so if you start by telling just to give you an idea of the workarounds, you can feel the pain that someone had when trying to, to do this. It shouldn't be like this. So we introduced yet another configuration option that is easy to use. At least we asked the community and people were, uh, were happy with it. That allows you to specify your output custom customization by source or by, uh, that could be syscall or plugins, or you can specify tags, specific rules, which output you want, and lets you configure the fields, also adding environment variables and stuff that uh, you could use uh, to, to put your own label that maybe uh, will help better identifying your workloads. And, and another thing that we wanted to do is to make uh, the installation uh, process of uh, uh, Falco easier. So, uh, of course, we love Kubernetes, and we know that people use uh, some kind of Kubernetes clusters that are not exactly your tutorial Kubernetes, you might have a multi-architecture cluster with heterogeneous nodes that run different kernel versions. You can have a lot of these things. And installing Falco on these might have been pretty complicated because, uh, as you know, Falco can use a kernel module or an eBPF probe to do its job. But the problem is uh, you don't need to be an eBPF expert or even know what eBPF is in order to install Falco, and you had to. And you had to know which driver you needed and all this stuff. So in the latest version, since 039, we improved uh, the installation procedure and the hand chart a lot by uh, adding an automated uh, driver configuration at start. So if you don't uh, have specific needs for customization, for each node, Falco will try to figure out which one, which driver is the best for you, and try to install it for your, for your architecture. So this is something that users have been asking for quite a while, and we're very happy to deliver. But uh, it's not just that. Uh, in, uh, in Falco, we have a lot of improvement. We are having a lot of improvement to the plugin ecosystem and to other details under the hood and things to come. And now I can pass it to Jason that will tell us more about this. Thank you. Uh, nice to see everyone. I'm going to cover a few updates about what's happening in the plugin framework and ecosystem in our community over the past six months. Uh, there has been a lot of movement. I personally lost track of it, and I was a bit surprised when I needed to compose this slide. To provide context, uh, we initially introduced two years ago the plugin framework as a meaning for enlarging and extending the use cases of Falco to something that was like, I don't know, audit events or logs for, from some platforms. But eventually we figured out that it could be more, it could be a way for fostering contributions and to uh, create a brighter future in, in the technical terms for the project itself, also for the previous use cases. 
Uh, we now reached the point where the plugin API essentially allows us to do everything that is possible in the Falco core tech stack. And essentially, this is now the way we, we also as maintainers are developing new things. Uh, to do so, we needed to add new capabilities that were missing. Um, starting from the UX, uh, as a developer, we needed a standardized way to, to do logging. Right now, we're now able to provide a clear API uh, that pipes in everything into the standard Falco logger. You can partition everything by severity and also by the, at the component level. We have a way for suggesting Falco rules outputs. So for example, take uh, the integration that we launched last year or actually in, in production a few months ago about Kubernetes uh, metadata enrichment you know, in the new form. Uh, if you're wondering like, what's the minimum set of information I need to attach to my Falco alerts to know about the Kubernetes environment this thread has been discovered into, now the plugins tell you right away. So you can define your custom ones, but the plugin is gonna suggest it, and if you don't have the plugin enabled, you're just not gonna see the data. If you have it enabled, you're gonna have a prepackaged set of data that you can see in every alert. Metrics are also a big thing that was, uh, was in high demand in a community. Uh, for whoever of you is familiar, you know, working with Prometheus, uh, this is pretty much what it is. You can define counters, gauges, those sort of things. And this um, goes in pair with the new support to metrics that we introduced in Falco, which I'm gonna cover later. Um, plugins now are also prime, uh, sorry, first class citizens for whatever uh, concerns state management inside Falco. Um, again, for context, Falco, while processes system calls from the kernel, maintains a, an internal approximation of the state of the machine in terms of which processes are running, which containers, what are the files being opened at a certain moment. Now plugins can access that since a while, but now they can also react when a capture has been started or stopped in order not to waste resources. Performance and resource usage is, is one of the, our first priorities. They can define and access nested state tables, which for context is the internal uh, way through which Falco keeps track of the open file descriptors, which are now accessible and editable um, in plugins as well. And there's one thing that we are about to wrap up in the next few weeks, which is for plugins to collect state of you know, themselves and dump it in a form that can be potentially replayed later on or analyzed. Uh, moving to performance and resource usage, uh, plugin can you know, they always uh, uh, were able to be configured in order to use ju just what they need, depending on the user's needs, but now they can also do it runtime without any need for rebooting. So a runtime Falco can essentially uh, tune its own performance depending on the load, potentially. And we provide a shared thread pool so that whatever plugin, and we have a bunch at this point, and required to do uh, some async-like programming or require some core routine or recurring um, routine function, they can just use you know, some common uh, shared resources in order not to waste any. Speaking about improvements in the community as a whole, uh, we have the C++ SDK that has been running in production right now with the plugins that we developed uh, officially as maintainers and we provide in the community. And uh, it's about to be tagged uh, as a stable artifact. It's gonna happen in the next few weeks. You we were just wrapping up the latest changes. We now have data points about how many downloads we have for the new Kubernetes metadata enrichment feature in the form of a plugin, uh, which we launched, I think, at the beginning of the year. And uh, we tipped 20 million downloads, as far as GitHub is you know, telling us. And the last million has been reached, uh, I think, over the past three weeks. So I think this is very exciting and kind of a success metric. The anomaly detection plugin um, that has been uh, launched, actually announced last year and developed by our uh, maintainer Melissa is also now merged as part of the official ones that we provide in our arsenal. And I'm looking forward to see this running in production. I'm very curious. There are other plugins also popping up from the community. So this means that there are not some that the Falco organization provides and hosts and maintains, but they're generally contributions and projects owned by other people inside the Falco community that just they want to share in our registry for awareness. Uh, we now have new platforms supported for the detecting threats um, in, uh, in platform or cloud logs. Uh, these ones, the latest ones in the past six months are GitLab, Kafka, Keycloak, uh, and JournalD. Uh, last but not least, uh, as I told you now, this is the way we are developing new things ourselves, but also we are starting to port and modularize things for which we already had support. This has been initiated already with the Kubernetes metadata enrichment support. Now we're doing the same with the container runtime so that it can become optional, maybe multi-language, and we can solve potential bugs and performance issues that the community has been reporting since a while. There is an open proposal that has been um, opened actually earlier this week uh, about moving that feature in the form of a plugin, um, and we are just gathering feedback right now. But an MVP and work has been happening since a couple of weeks already.
Honorable mention goes to Rust. Uh, thanks to the uh, tireless efforts of one of our core maintainers, uh, Jagorj, um, we now have a Rust crate uh, officially maintained and released in the community that uh, Rust developers can use to write Falco plugins. And we're very excited about it. Um, it's very suitable for performance critical use cases like the one of Falco and essentially marks the first uh, step walked by Falco in the Rust community and towards a more type safe and reliable uh, tech future like the industry is now demanding more and more. And the nice thing is also that this language in the specific allowed us to introduce a bunch of compile static check and assertions and type safety checks that help us better test Falco itself. And as a matter of fact, this uh, automatic code generation spotted a bug in our kernel drivers, which, I mean, it was a minor, but it would be very hard to spot with a human high without this kind of technology. Uh, I was also involved uh, in the latest uh, development of our support to Matrix and Prometheus. Uh, we now have a novel support that we released in the latest Falco version about this, providing a bit of context. So Falco had since uh, a long time ago support uh, to our Prometheus exporter, but it was a separate project, like deployed separately from Falco and connected to it through gRPC and just kept count of every security alert emitted and their information, nothing more than that. Um, there was a big demand for something integrated and more comprehensive, and we achieved it right now. This is now out. Uh, so the load exporter is on the road to deprecation. Uh, and now we comply, all, yes, to the Prometheus standard, but for whoever needs it, we also can provide the metric snapshot sent as a file alert to provide extra flexibility to our users. Um, but the nice thing is that by being integrated into you know, as part of the uh, core Falco features, we can now share whatever Falco sees, and he sees a lot. Uh, as I told you before, he maintains an approximation of the state of the system. So now we have extra metrics, which we didn't have before, about CPU and memory usage, uh, the health of the, you know, current event capture and stream, uh, again, how many security alerts we had, uh, what are the running processes, even about Falco itself. It monitors itself. Um, and of course, this is, like I told you before, uh, completely integrated with the plugin API. So plugins can define their own metric counters, and you can define your own extension counting whatever you need for your specific environment and use case. Um, and of course, we want to be our first users. So we have an open infrastructure and cluster we use for our CI jobs, and we install Falco for detection um, and protection. Uh, but now that we have this information, we also created a cool Grafana dashboard that you can see over there, which now help us also monitoring um, the health of the cluster itself in terms of uh, resource usage. Uh, before passing the mic, I also wanted to mention a new thing that is in the works, which I'm involved in uh, from an R&D perspective. As Luca uh, presented before, we introduced the transformers uh, to make the Falco language more powerful and expressive. And uh, they were a bit of a success in the terms of like allowing to develop new detections and new kinds of Falco rules we could envision in the past. So gathering some feedback, we thought that we could do better and make it even more powerful and uh, make it seem like uh, kind of functions uh, and more complex aggregator operator operations and have an arbitrary number of arguments. By introducing this language construct, we envision new things to be possible. A few examples are listed here, which have been discussed in open GitHub issues, but could, they could be more. For example, um, parsing POSIX compli compliant command line arguments, uh, concatenating strings, for example, if you want to have the entire process lineage when you have a certain detection on a certain thread, um, or even mathematical um, functions like the one showed. So I think the possibilities are a bit endless at this point. We are working on it. Stay tuned. Uh, it may you know, come up in the next Falco uh, release. All right. That's it for me. Uh, I'm going to pass the mic to Carlos at this point. Okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the ecosystem projects. Falco itself is great and uh, we all love, but uh, we have a lot, a lot, uh, quite some projects in the ecosystem that uh, enhances Falco and give superpower to, to Falco itself. The first one is the, our newest uh, uh, donated project that uh, uh, I think was donated last month, right? And uh, it's pretty new. It's a, a work that was uh, being doing by Thomas, myself, and others in the in the community for some time. And then we, they decided to donate this to Falco organization itself. It's a response engine that uh, helps to manage the, the tweets in the Kubernetes cluster. And the idea here is uh, to use a no no code approach. Like we're gonna, uh, for example, Falco detect uh, a thread. And then uh, it raises an event, and then Falco Talon like react on that event that it, it, we defined 
in a in a file before. The QR code goes straight to the GitHub project that you can take a look and help us to uh, contribute more on that. For example, this is a, a simple example for of a, a action rule for Talon. That's the first one. It's an action. That's a, the action that we define that can be reused in other rules. And the second one is or the first one is terminate a pod. The second one is disable outbound connections. Then we define say. Let's uh, disable those uh, uh, networks, and uh, then we have a, a rule that uh, gonna uh, when Falco send an event, we're gonna match this rule, and then we're gonna take some actions. For example, in this case, we have another uh, when there's a su suspicious outbound connection, we get all the logs from the, the pod, we disable the outbound connections, and then we terminate the pod itself. Then that. Uh, pod is deleted and might be not a, a, a risk anymore for the event. The other one, other project we have in the community is the Falco Sidekick, which is the uh, event forward to different uh, uh, outputs. Like in this case, we have like pushing events to Slack, to Elasticsearch, and uh, even like to our favorites, uh, on-call tools that, that we can push and also can pull uh, Prometheus can pull those metrics as well. And Falco Sidekit works together also with Falco Talon, and then it's uh, like integrated really well in the, in the system. Uh, to keep up with those projects, and we have other projects in, in the ecosystem as well, we would like to invite people like to, we are always looking for new contributors and maintainers for the projects, and uh, we you can join our our Falco channel in the Kubernetes Slack. And every Wednesday, we have a community call. Then uh, if you have questions, if you want to have any ideas, if you want to contribute more, like start contributing to us, even uh, like doing documentation code or new plugins or new rules or a new tool, maybe, then join us. We are happy to, to host and uh, help you to guide in, the, in this path. We also have a, a dev, also mailing list that you can join and receive the up-to-date uh, information. Thank you. And we're gonna have the uh, celebration for graduated projects, which Falco was graduated, and uh, we didn't have that in Paris. We're gonna happen here. It's after this talk we can go into the, I think, to the Pavilion project. The, the space is going to be have a, a little bit of uh, uh, cupcakes with the Falco logo there. Hope to see you there. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, there's time for Q&A. We covered a lot. So in case you have any curiosities, we're open. Let's have the cupcake then. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.